Hi everyone, this is a quick tutorial on how to set up your VPS with Minecraft MicMyAdmin. Um, so we're going to start off by, you're going to need a couple things on your local machine. Um, first you'll start by needing uh, Notepad++. Let's get this in the window here. You need Notepad++, uh, WinSCP and Punny. Um, the easiest way to get these things is by downloading Ninite. Uh, what you can do here is you can go, this is a neat little program, you can download a bunch of different things at the same time. Uh, it might be something you want to familiarize yourself with, um, but right down here at the bottom you can just go ahead and click Notepad++, Putty, and Winite, and just click Get Installer. And then you can download it. Right now it's not exactly downloading it, but once you run it it's going to pop up like this. Click yes. And it's going to go ahead and download it and install it as I've already got it. Um, I don't need to install it, but this is something that you can take advantage of. And it's free. And you don't need it. I don't need it, but you need it. Um, once you've got those three things installed, you can go ahead and get the next, which would be downloading MicMyAdmin here. Which you'll just click download right there going to bucket getting the latest build which would be we're getting the 1.01 .01 or the newest build whichever may be right now um, next we'll be going to the Dynamap get plugins right here which will take you to this page typing in whatever plugin you want which I'm gonna start off by we're gonna get four plugins for this tutorial which will be essentials you already have open up here and we'll click click up here get the core download and get group manager so we'll click, click on group manager and it'll download it too next we'll go to world guard world guard is a couple steps to download Click World Guard right here. Click Download again. And one more time, and it should download it. Same thing for World Edit. These are just a couple tools to um, make it a lot easier to admin on your server and do a bunch of neat things. Um, trust me, you'll you'll love having them once you get to know to use them. And the last thing is DynMap, which is incredible and I'll show you how to set that up and use it at the end of this tutorial. Um, so once you have all those done, the first thing you're going to want to do is um, putty into your server or set up uh, WinSCP to get into it first. So open up WinSCP. Uh, you're going to want to create a new connection to whatever your host name is which right now I have it set up on my network so which will be just like your, yours I'm putting all my passwords in here which is exactly like you would do and I'm going through um, SFTP which is my SSH um, So I'm just going to save this for later access to it. And so it saved my password and everything in there. And so you're going to click yes on this. And this is just saving it, telling you it's going to save it in your cache. So now once you're in here, you're in the root directory, which is the root user for me, or your actual user folder. Um, so if, otherwise it would be in a user folder that it created for you. Once we're in here, if you click up on the top here, there's a putty, which will open a putty session, and you'll click yes on this. It's just I'm making another cache file for it, and then you'll type in your password again. This just, this background right here, just makes it so you can send files, you can just drag them over 
and this one right here makes it so you can run console commands. So the first thing you're going to do to set up your Minecraft server is you're going to install Java. In order to set up Java, you have to do uh, a few things. The first thing you're going to need to do is uh, go to the Java website, which I have open up here, and um, figure out which version of Java you're going to need for Ubuntu, which is going to start with Linux. Uh, if you have 80 x86, which is 32-bit, or x64, which is 64-bit, um, I suggest downloading the compressed binary, one of these two. Uh, I'm going to need to click the I accept little button here, which I've already clicked. And then what you're going to want to do is just right click and go copy link address. And then you're going to go back to your putty and type in wget. And then just right click in a putty window and it automatically pastes and hit enter. And it's going to start downloading that file for you. It's going to take a little bit, so I'm going to pause the video and resume it once it's. Alright, so my download is finished. My The next step is to unzip it. So what we're going to do is type in tar xvf space and then the name of the file whichever your file you're downloading so we're going to start it off with JDK and if you hit tab it should automatically populate the file name and you just hit return and it should just scroll through a bunch of junk and it should just end and so now if you type in ls it should list all the files in that directory so right now we have our original download file and the folder it created which is the JDK 1.7.0 so what we're going to want to do is move that into its right directory so we're going to have to um, make a dir, so mkdir slash user lib and then jvm and then we're going to move it so mv I'm just going to copy and paste this in there because that's what you guys are going to do like that, bam so now if I do a ls, it's no longer there, and now it's in that other directory, user lib jvm jdk. So now what we're going to do is we're going to update it just to make sure that it's working. If you didn't have, have um, Java installed before, all this should work. It should say it's already in auto mode. It's using it. And so we're going to have to do this for each one of the Java files. There's three of them. Java see like there's Java, Java C, and there's Java WS. And then we can just check and make sure we gotta do each one of these. Config Java, see nothing to configure. Just make sure we're gonna run through each one of these processes. This will all be in the description for you to do. I'll have it set up and then we'll just check our Java version to make sure it's running. See 1.7 looks like we're all set so now we are running Java correctly and then so next we're gonna go on to installing mono so for this I just have one little short install you just right click it and paste it I'm gonna have to hit yes I believe yep do I want to I sure you want to install this yes I'll just pause it and resume. Alright, now Mono has finished. So now the next step is to configure make my admin and get that all installed on our VPS. And so what we're going to do here is go back into our folder. I'm just going to delete this to my old one for my Windows and re-extract this. So I'm just going to go with my 7-zip and extract it here and then open this up and so right here is my default config and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy and paste it in here just rename it yes I want to rename it and so if I open this up with uh, notepad plus plus now this will tell me the the password. So the problem with doing it on a VPS is when you go to run it, it won't let you run it with a default password. 
as admin, you won't be able to connect to it. So we're going to have to change that right off. So we will need to go to md5encryptor.com and create a new password. So my favorite password to create is password1234. Type in the CAPTCHA. Copy this. And then paste it in here. Um, everything else should be all set. We just save that. And then we are going to, for now, just copy this into refresh this. We're going to create a new folder in our root directory in um, the server and call it Minecraft. This is what I do. And so we know that that's the Minecraft folder. And then drop in the McMyam and latest. And that'll take a moment to copy all over. And so in there right now we have the mcmyadmin.exe. So next we're going to go back into putty and figure out where I am. And then so I'm going to change directory. And then so now in there you can see the Minecraft folder. So I'm just going to CD into Minecraft. I'm, I keep hitting tab to automatically populate it so I don't have to type it all. And then I'm just going to CD to mic and then go back into there. And then I'm going to type in mono micmyadmin.exe and it should start running it. And so it's downloading the latest micmyadmin, the Minecraft server right now. And it's telling me I have to create, use the uh, first logon wizard just like it would in Windows. So let me just type in the 7 port 8080 and then admin and then my the password 1234. Uh, continue with wizard server name, my test server, public list, no survival, yes, yes, yes. Sure, start from template, Winter Wonderland. And so right now it's starting the server for the first time. We're not really going to be able to see it there. But right now, if we go back to the... It's showing all the stuff. Let's see, the server's not running. It's restarting it right now. Bam. Loading spawn area. So it looks like everything's running good so far. Got some success here. So let's now install Bucket. Um, it seems that McMyAdmin has uh, updated recently. And so now we might actually be able to click this. And it should install Bucket. So we don't have to go and install manual Bucket anymore. So right now it should be like we are running bucket. Yes. So that's success. And so now we want to go install the bucket plugins. So the first thing we're going to do is go back into our Minecraft folder. So let me just 7 zip it, extract here. All we need from this one. Craft scripts in the jar. So on, so let's extract here. This one, so let's zip. Did edit already. And dine map. Don't need the license. Alright, so now let's click everything, don't need you. Let's sort it by file type, bam. So we need all this to go into the plugins folder, which is now created.
and copy. So now that that's done, let's start up the server. Let's go to the chat and see what happens. Starting. Oh, here we go. Everything seems to be running. Dying map just started. Alright, so let's do one more thing. Let's go into server features. Let's turn on the group manager. So that now that when we add ourselves into the administrators group, add myself into there. I have commands over the server, so now I, when I go into the server I can build. Um, this is where I'll add my backup to the server, so at once per day at, let's say, 8 p.m., so that'd be 20. Back up the world state, add event, and then obviously in here, this is where you would once per day, let's say five minutes before, um, send a server notice backing up the world in five minutes. And that's where you'd send server notices to tell people, you know, what's going on. Um, and then in here, obviously, you can type more server notices. Um, here's where I see how there's only seven backups. And obviously, if we wanted to change that, we would go into the config for micmyadmin, which is here. We just search for backup. So where the path is, we change this to 31. We have to restart the, uh, the server to do that. I'll set that up. To get uh, micmyadmin to start on startup, what you're going to want to do is go to micmyadmin and then edit your start.sh. So all you're going to want to do is double click on here and you're going to add cd minecraft micmyadmin dash latest here and then an ampersand at the end to micmyadmin.exe. Then you're going to want to save this file and then you're going to want to open up PuTTY. Type in your password again. Type in sudo nano slash etsy rc.local and then you're going to want to do sh slash minecraft slash mic my admin dash latest start dot sh and then when you reboot it should automatically start up the server and start up your mic my admin and your server all together. So if if you do ever lose power or your server automatically restarts, it should automatically boot everything up all at once. So see, there it goes. Bam. And my server's starting up. So if you have any more questions, um, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. I hope this all helped.